Hey, shalom everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Got a shout out to the crew members. Call out to the crew members. Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters. I was reading, am reading, the uh, biography that Ronald Chernow wrote of Alexander Hamilton. I found the musical, which is, you know, 10 years, I'm 10 years behind the times. Uh, and it struck me that he did, the person who choreographed it and wrote the, you know, the lines and the songs and everything, uh, Lynn manuel Noriega, not Noriega, Miranda, Lynn Manuel Miranda. Um, <clears throat> he did a really good job of capturing the spirit of the American Revolution. And we've, Pastor and I have already read books on, I think one's called Patriots and, and uh, biographies on some of the founding fathers. But this particular book brings together a lot of information that I had not seen before. And something struck me today when I was reading about the Federalist essays. There were, I think they said 85 Federalist essays. And Hamilton, uh, James Madison, and John Jay wrote these essays. As our government went from the Articles of Confederation to the actual Constitution. And that Hamilton had a lot to do with how it was organized and how our government finally wound up with an executive branch, a legislative branch, and a um, judicial branch. And what struck me about the book today was the illusion of peace. And I call it an illusion of peace because I don't. I mean, the U.S. has had periods of peace, but we've also been involved in small wars around the world and, and also divisions in our country. And right now is one of those times. It's a perfect example of divisions within the country where you have two separate groups who kind of are overlapping, BLM and Antifa, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> protesting in the street, causing civil unrest. And it, it's a threat. It's a threat, at least to me, and I think to most of the populace, that this is going on. Why, you know, why are we having these disturbances? What's going to be the outcome, etc.? And something I read today makes me feel calm about that because the founding fathers anticipated, understood that people don't always get along. And one of the ways that they designed our government was with that reality in mind. That's why we are, our government is a system of checks and balances because they understood there's going to be a, a popular <clears throat> group, excuse me, um, there's going to be a, a group of guys who are manufacturers, there's going to be an agrarian group, there's going to be people with money and land, there's going to be people, be people without. And all of those different groups need to work together. That's the beauty of our, our government. And something else that struck me was that our forefathers studied other republics. Because even though the press and popular people want to say we're a democracy, we are not a democracy. We are a, a series, a set of 50 separate states. That's how we are a republic. Uh, look up the Weimar Republic. It was a, a republic over in the area that's Germany and Prussia and Austria and whatever. It was separate states who band together to form one nation. And so the founding fathers looked at the past and looked at England, who they just separated with, and tried to reason out how can we form a government with our country the way it is now. They had 13 individual states. <clears throat> but these men were not ignorant of the fact that there was land to the west of them, and if there was a lot of that land, then this country would get bigger, and they would need to make the government respond to that. And so they wanted flexibility, and they wanted checks and balances, but they, they built into it the ability, the understanding, that peace was not going to be something that happened all the time, that different groups were going to be in contention with each other even and let's just say right now we have the left and the right and and right now in these two parties um at least the way they're broadcasting it they're they're at odds you know we're liberal we're conservative 
abor um, abortion, not abortion. You know what I mean? And that's why our government is so wonderful the way it is. They also <clears throat> designed it to have a strong federal government, but also each state to have its own strong government so that the states and the federal government could be in opposition to each other. And, and if the FedGov gets too powerful, the states can check it. And if a state gets too powerful, the FedGov can check it so that everything stays in a balance. But it's not a balance of peace. And I think that's where a lot of the <coughs> A lot of the modern zeitgeist, a lot of the modern stress and, and upset that people feel uneasiness is with the perception that there's no peace and that there ought to be. And where did that come from? Well, of course, in the Bible, it talks about people will say peace, peace, but there is no peace. But I'm not sure that the the political situation is the same as the biblical situation. So I'm talking about just the political situation right now, the civil world. And the whole notion of peace, peace, peace came around with the, the 60s and the hippies and the peace, love, make love, not war, tune in, uh, turn on and drop out kind of mindset. It, it creates the illusion that everybody can just be sitting around, you know, a campfire at peace when the reality of life is not everybody can do that. There are people who have to work. There are people who want to work. There are jobs that have to be done for a country to, to actually continue to operate. Um, and so when you get something like the Vietnam War or um, the Bosnian War, it, it the press makes a huge deal out of it. How many people were killed and, and um, how many civilians have been injured and how many people have been dislocated and isn't our government bad and so on where we should see it as just a natural occurrence that happens with people. I mean, there are wars going on in the world right now that have nothing to do with the United States. We're not doing anything with those wars. Um, People just do that. So you build that into the system, ways to manage it, ways to um, survive it, respond to it, um, and recover from it. And we have that in our government as well. So think about that in relation to what's going on right now in our country, the politics, what the press is saying, and what the ultimate goal for our country should be and is designed to do to keep the republic together and to keep the republic operating. All right, y'all, food for thought. Bless you. Shalom, crew members, the shirt should be coming. They said within 10 days, so it's coming. Bless you, shalom.